Hello, I'm Canadian Joe, the one you've been dreaming about. This is Board Deck and Dice, and today we're looking at Dice City. Dice City, as the name implies, is about rolling a dice and building the most effective city. Every player gets five dice and they get this massive board uh, with various locations on. You have the white locations, yellow locations, red locations, blue locations, and the black locations. And what you'll do is roll those dice and then pop them in the relevant row. So th one, three, yellow, one, blue, three, red, two, and black, four. Everyone does that at the same time. Then on the player's go, they decide how to use their dice. There are a number of things they can do. If they have a dice they don't want, they can spend it to get rid of some of the market things, uh, market locations, which are things down here that you can buy for the resources on the left. Um, and you might want to do that if you get all the same cards out. There's eight cards out. I don't know how well you can see. I think you only see six in there. But there is eight cards there. And so generally you have a good variety of options to buy. But if you did want to clear four of those off, you could spend a dice to do that. You can spend a dice to move one of the other dice, one space left or right. If you prefer that, you can take the action below the dice. Uh, which is, in this case, get resource, get resource, get resource, get armies. There's also re-roll, get victory points, etc, etc. Or you can use a dice to get a pass token. Getting a pass token and wiping out the four of the uh, market locations is a once-a-turn thing. Pass, locate, uh, pass lo tokens are very useful because you can use those to gain one resource of your choice to increase an army strength by one, or to force another player to re-roll a dice of your choice. As the game goes on, you will be building resources with the aim of strengthening your city. So where resources get you one, where locations get you one, you might buy these simple resources, these simple locations, which can get you two. You don't have to place it on the same one, you can place it anywhere you want. You know, upgrade your wood to get you two wood, but you may also want to get some of these special ones, yellow ones, which let you do all sorts of cunning things. Of course, to get this, I would have to pay two wood, one stone, and one iron. So this one lets every harvest location on this row gets one resource of that type. Um, so if I pop this here and landed on it with a dice, if I rolled a four, I would be able to get a resource from every location, but that has this token, so I'd have to exhaust it to do that. And that's another thing you can spend your dice on to refresh exhausted locations. If you want to attack people, you can attack them for the defense value in the bottom left corner, and that will put an exhausted token on their location as well. You are looking to build up a more and more efficient city to get you victory points. There are other ways of getting victory points. If you're an attacker and you like the attack route, you have these bandits up here, bandits worth uh, with three, four and five defense, and they give you various victory points. If you defeat them, you take that and place it face down. If all three bandit tope piles get emptied, that is signaling the last round. There are also trade ships. If you like to build up your resources, you can get trade ships um, worth 5, 10 and 20 victory points, which is a big deal. 20 victory points is a massive deal if you manage to get that. When two of these rows have gone, then that signals the last round. If the location refresh pile, which there's loads of, runs out, that signals the last round. And if anyone fills up two rows on their city, then that signals the last round. Every, uh, most locations also have a victory point cost. You get some locations like these purple ones, which tend to give you victory points. Uh, you can see the color coded thing on the, on the board. Yellows tend to give you a special power. Greens tend to give you resources. Reds tend to give you army powers. Um, uh, blues are, tend to give you, and again, another special power. You only get to keep one of each resource at the end of the round. You can keep as many pass tokens as you like, but in terms of the three main resources, you only get to keep one. So it's a case of planning, um, using the dice, but also obviously there's luck, but you can mitigate that luck to some degree by spending dice that you don't want. And as it, the turn goes on, you're building up a more and more impressive city, trying to watch what other people are doing. There's this clever, um, where you can kind of force the end of the game. If you think you've got 
more victory points than the other people playing it goes two to four you can just start filling up your rows or trying to attack bandits to to force the end of the game one player did this against me i had no idea that that's what he was doing by the time i cottoned on that he was just buying cheap cheap locations just to fill up the rows because he knew he'd beaten me in victory points it was too late there's a lot of strategy here and i really like it i have to say that since i've got this i haven't really played much in coro which is another dice rolling city builder. Um, the intimidation factor, I mean, there's a lot of information on some of the cards, but they're quite cutie, they make sense. Um, it's there a little bit. I think these little cards that kind of make it seem less, less intimidating somehow. They are the most one of the most annoying things, but then the player boards would have to be massive if you use bigger cards, so I can see why they've done that. Um, the rule book's really clear, the game's a lot of fun. Um, not, I probably prefer 51st State to this, which again you could say is a city builder with cards, and, and but without dice, but still that randomness of drawing cards. Um, but this is good fun, again, easy for people to pick up. They've got the board in front of them, they've got the colours and the dice, they know they're rolling, they have a little sheet that tells them what they can do with the dice, um, and it's all there in front of them. A bit, a bit fiddly with the resources when you're kind of taking them and then paying them straight back because that's what you want to do um, and remembering you can only keep one um, but in general a, a really good fun game that's easy to teach and goes down well with people. That's Dice City. Thanks very much for watching.